Good evening. Welcome to my laboratory. What you're looking at there is the device that I call the TK Tickler, or the uh, Micro Quig Quantum Energy Generator. This is a device that incorporates uh, several Tesla patents, like for example the bifiler primary winding on this coil here. This is a true Tesla bifiler winding with six turns. You can see the little crossover there. Uh, and a couple of other Tesla patents too. And um, it is uh, all solid state, self-resonating, so you don't have to go through the process of running up a motor to get it into resonant categories. And the input power is very easy to measure because it's straight DC coming from this battery right here, and I'll be showing the input voltage and current. And then over here is the uh, secondary of the transformer that I use to convert from the VARs into real power to power an actual load. All right, now let's see if I can do this with one hand without breaking something. So let's see, let's uh, turn the apparatus on. Oof. Okay, so there's the input voltage and current, straight DC. There is the output waveform. I'll be talking about that in a moment. But right now, what I want to do is uh, is uh, get into resonance. Oh, this is the little uh, electrosmog harvester. There's no battery in there, people. Okay, so it does need to be tuned to resonance, though. Should be somewhere around there. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so as you can see now, we are resonating. Side there, like that. Just to remind you that we're resonating. Okay, and that made the power draw go up by about 10 milliamps, current draw sticking that thing in there. Okay, so now let's talk about the output parameters, okay? So over here, what I've done is I've got a scope probe hooked directly across the primary coil, just like the QEG measurements uh, are, and then I've got another, uh, you could call this a current transformer. It's a loop stick with the core removed, and that whole loop stick coil is just slipped over one of the supply legs to the, to the tank circuit. So that corresponds to your Rogowski coil uh, current sense transformer. Now this, of course, is not going to be calibrated in terms of amplitude, uh, volts to amps, but it is going to show us the phase relationship between the current and the voltage in the primary tank circuit, right? So that should be there to give us the phase shift. So the two scope probes are hooked up. Right now I'm just showing the... Uh, the uh, tank voltage, the voltage across the core, our coil, we're at uh, 20 volts per division, right? 10x attenuated probe, DC coupled, and the baseline for this is the centered radical marker, and we're also at uh, one microsecond per division there, okay? So let's get a quick uh, frequency reading on that. We'll just unplug that scope probe carefully and take it over to the Phillips counter and there's our frequency of oscillation 303.38 kilohertz and as you can see the oscillation is very stable fluctuating in the tenth of a hertz okay so that's our resonant frequency that we're going on here. And there's our input. So now what about the, the current in that? Well, uh, I've uh, uh, measured the impedance of this coil with a meter, and it's 5 microhenries, uh, roughly 5 microhenries on my pros kit meter. I've also measured the capacitance of the tank capacitors there, and that pyramid power tank capacitor arrangement uh, is a total of 64.5 nanofarads made up of those uh, 10,000 picofarad 5% polyfilm capacitors. Okay, 
six of them in parallel. All right, so that's the tank parameters, and if you solve the resonant frequency formula for uh, uh, for frequency using these values, you'll come out to very very close to our actual measured frequency of 303 kilohertz. Okay, so all of that is working as per theory. We are resonating as per theory. And, uh, oh, incidentally, for those of you who build circuits like these, the uh, transistors in my oscillator are not getting warm at all. The big resistors do get warm. That's why they're big. They need to be 2 or 3 watt resistors. But the transistors being switched properly are not, not even warm. They're at room temperature. Okay, so uh, back to the current. Okay, so we have the current transformer on there. So let's take a look at uh, what it looks like. Oh, I guess I should plug the plug the scope probe back in over here. And now let's change the display a little bit. Let's go to both channels. Okay. And let's go to 50 volts per division on that and move it up a little bit. Alright, so here's the current, oh, it needs to be, here's the current waveform, and if I invert that channel, there's the inversion of that channel, but I think that we are at the right phase relationship here, and as you can see, I hope you can see, there's, a, there's only a very small negative phase shift there, okay, it certainly isn't anything like 85 degrees or 87 degrees that you would need to cancel out completely the, or to give us a cosine theta value small enough to uh, cancel out the large reactive power measurements. Alright, so there's the phase relationship between current and voltage. Alright, now, now let's do a little math. Okay. Alright, input power is straight DC from a sealed lead acid battery at about 12.3 volts, three, uh, 300 milliamps. So that gives us a straight DC power of 3.69 watts. And as you can see, we're actually running a little under that right now, right? Oh, sorry. Forgot about the LEDs. So let's not forget about those. Okay, because there, there's a very real load being powered by this system. All right. So that's the input power. Now, let's look at some output power, okay? Peak-to-peak -peak voltage that we showed on the scope there is 82 volts. And the current, then, is going to be the, uh, by the, by the inductive version of Ohm's law, is going to be the voltage drop across that impedance. And the, it turns out that the impedance of uh, 5 microhenry inductor at 303 kilohertz is about 8.186 ohms. So then the peak-to-peak -peak current becomes the voltage drop divided by that impedance since the uh, actual DC resistance of that coil is negligible. And that gives us a 10 amp peak-to-peak -peak value. Texas has resonant! Let's get the RMS values of those numbers. All right, so the RMS is the uh, peak value, not peak to peak, but peak value multiplied by 0.707. So that's 29 volts RMS and uh, 3.54 amps RMS for those measured voltage and current values. All right, so what's the power in the primary tank? Well, it's a pure sine wave, as I've shown. The current value, the current waveform is distorted because the little loop stick coil is trying to resonate it at its natural frequency. Uh, but at any rate, the average power in the tank, VRMS times IRMS, is 29.3.54, is 102 watts. And that gives us over unity in VARS. Woo! <laughs> But, as we know, the real power 
has to take into account the phase shift. So the real power is 102 watts divided by the cosine of the phase angle. And so to get a real power uh, in that tank, we need to know the phase angle. And as I showed you on the scope, it ain't that large. The phase difference by this means of measurement is actually fairly small. It's nowhere near the uh, cosine of 87 degrees or so that you would need to bring that value down to that value. Okay, got that. Texas has resonance. Thank you for watching.